as we get into more extensive structures, there's one last kind of, one last main kind of strain energy that we want to look at. This is the strain energy when we have bulkier groups attached to the cyclohexane ring. So switch out one of your axial hydrogen for a CH3 group. So we have a methyl group on the molecule in one of the axial positions. The hydrogens which are projecting off that carbon in the CH3 group, they're getting just too close for comfort to the carbon to hydrogen bonds on the top side of the molecule. We're getting into some serious sterical strain again. The atoms are almost getting on top of each other. That therefore causes a new kind of strain energy for our molecule. So from the first carbon, where the CH3 group is protruding off, we count one, two, three carbons around the ring to the next axial position on the same side of the ring. This is where the sterical interaction is coming from. So we call it a 1-3 diaxial interaction. First and third carbon, they're both axial, so they are diaxial interactions. Hence we call it a 1-3 diaxial interaction. And there's a second energy, the other way around the ring, 1-2-3. So it's again a 1-3 interaction. The groups we're concerned with are both axial, so it's again a 1-3 diaxial interaction. So let's look at the strain energies we've seen so far. Looking at the open chain molecule, where we've got the eclipsing of bonding electrons, the CH bond to the CH bond, we said we're mostly torsional strain, bonding electrons in one carbon, the antibonding orbital of the second carbon, and that was four kilojoules per mole of strain energy. We've got a CH bond to a carbon to carbon CH3 bond. The bonding electrons to the antibonding uh, orbital give us mostly torsional strain this time. As the atoms get too close together and the bonding electrons get too, too close together. But then with a carbon, the carbon bond with two CH3 groups protruding off from those two carbons, eclipse behind each other. Now we're talking about atoms which are physically on top of each other. We're now talking about a large amount of steric strain as well as this torsional strain. Remember, the steric strain is atoms physically on top of each other. The torsional strain is about the repulsion from bonding orbit. Next, we looked at a strain where we do have staggering between adjacent carbons. And now we're talking about CH3 group next to another CH3 group at that 60 degrees angle, causing this gauche strain, as we call it. Still, the groups are too close together, giving us mostly atoms on top of each other in this spherical strain. And that was 3.8 kilojoules per mole. Now a new one, specifically for a cyclic ring, a cyclohexane ring. We're talking about axial positions on the same side of the ring, which are split up by one, two, three carbons. We can do that in both directions clockwise and counterclockwise, one, two, three, both axial, so a diaxial interaction. And this is a CH3 group to a adjacent hydrogen, that gives us 3.8 kilojoules of strain. If the group here is an ethyl branch of the molecule, it gets a bit stronger, goes up to four kilojoules. If it's just a bromine atom, then even a bromine atom being a bit bigger than the hydrogen, still creates some steric strain, only just one kilojoule per mole. If it was an entire 
cyclohexene ring or rather a benzene ring attached. Remember a benzene ring is a carbon to carbon six member chain with alternating double and single bonds. So if it was a benzene group attached in a natural position above the ring, then it would create a diaxial interaction with the two hydrogens here and here and cause 6.3 kilojoules per mole of strength. Draw two different shear confirmations for trans 1,4 dimethyl cyclohexane and label the equatorial hydrogen. Two confirmations possible for 1,4 dimethyl cyclohexane, the trans version. Two forms of 1,4 dimethyl cyclohexane specific the two forms with a trans configuration. Two methyl groups on opposite sides of the plane. And when using the equatorial positions, we still have one methyl group below the plane slightly and one elevated just slightly above the plane. So it's still a trans combination. That's for energy. Does that ask for the equatorial hydrogen to point it out? Equatorial. That's a bit rubbish, that. Trying to make sure it obviously looks equatorial. Is it mistaken by something pointing up or down? Next part it says calculate the calculate the strain energy of the two molecules. Any problems with the energy of this molecule, first of all? Is there any strain? Might be a trick question. You know because the cyclohexane ring is staggered. We don't have any problems with eclipsing of groups around the ring. That's not going to apply in this case. But we did have a problem, we said, when we had a bulky group like the CH3 group or something bigger. We did have a problem when we had something which was in a axial position. We said there was a possibility for a sterical strain energy. So this is carbon one, one, two, three carbons away. We have an axial hydrogen. And we have a one, three, di axial interaction. As we said, cost 3.8 kilojoules per mole of strain energy. Then on the other side of the top half of the ring, one, two, three carbons away, it's a CH3 group and the hydrogen, which are sterically almost getting on top of each other, giving a second 3.8 kilojoules per mole of strain. And then below the molecule, on the underside of the plane of the ring, there's another axial CH3 group, giving another 1, 3 diaxial interaction with 3.8 kilojoules per mole. And around the other side of the ring, 1, 2, 3, another 3.8 kilojoules from a fourth 1, 3 diaxial interaction. So that diaxial strain is 
atmospheric strain four times over. That gives us 15.2 kilojoules total. gives us 15.2 kilojoules per mole of statical strain energy. In the second one, we have the CH3 groups in an equatorial position. So we don't have any problems from one free diaxial interaction. If they're not in an axial position, it can't be a one free diaxial interaction. So the equatorial positioning of the 1,4 trans isomer is a lower energy confirmation. 15.2 kilojoules per mole lower in energy. Lost light. 